Hey everyone, my name is Brandon and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at the assigned task component in AEM workflows. So let's get started. So in order to get to the actual, actual uh, workflow side of AEM, we're going to go down to tools, make sure you click on workflows and then models. We're going to go ahead and create a new model. And then we're going to go ahead and edit that model we just created. All right, so now we're on the uh, workflow workspace, if that's what you want to call it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this step one uh, step. And instead, we're going to go ahead and filter through our components and look for the assigned task component. So once you find it, you can go ahead and drag that over to the workflow. And now it's going to be the first step in our workflow. And now we can go ahead and click on that assigned task. We can go ahead and configure it. And this is where we can set up all the different configurations uh, within this particular workflow step. So this title is going to show up to the end user who receives a task from this step. So you want to make this make sure this title is user friendly. So maybe you want to say first step in the application process or whatever you have going on. Um, you know, you can also add a description that the end user can see to make sure that they know, you know, what step the workflow they're on and what they are expected to do. So maybe you can set a thumbnail for the this particular workflow step. You can also set a priority. This workflow should be very high on uh, the end user's radar. Then maybe you want to go ahead and click on the high priority. I'll leave it at medium. And then you can also set a due date. And you know you can do days or hours. So maybe we'll do two days as a due date for when workflow step is started. That the uh, user has that amount of time to actually complete it. And then we're going to go to the next tab, the form document tab. And this is where we're going to actually have our document at. So under adaptive form path, go find your form. So let's under here, we're going to go ahead and do this uh, job application form. If I can find it, so there it is right in front of me. And so we're going to make this a read-only adaptive form so that way the organization user is not able to edit this particular document. And in order to make sure that information in the form is already populated for the reviewer, if that's what you want, if you want to make sure, if you want to have data pre-populated, you need to go ahead and link the data file path to the the keyword you have set up in your form already and i'll go over what that looks like or how to set that up in the actual form so i'm going to go ahead and add my data file path if you have an attachment go ahead and add that as well and for submitted information i'm just going to go ahead and um, stick with these for now, even though they're not going to do anything. So for assignee, um, there's two options. You can either dynamically assign this task to a user or a group. So maybe there's a section on your form, um, you know, if clicked, one person receives it. If that's not clicked, then maybe another person receives it or something like that. But I'm just going to choose a specific user or group, and then I'm going to choose the uh, administrator. Um, that way I don't have to switch accounts uh, to actually view the task when we uh, test it out. And then actions, I'm going to leave uh, as is, as well as advanced. So that is configured now. Let's go ahead and sync that up. All right, so now um, that step has been completed. So now let's go over to the form we are going to run through this workflow to make sure it's properly configured to do so. All right, so now I'm on my form 
and we're going to go to the form container section. We're going to go into uh, the properties for that form container. And then we're going to make sure we clicked on the submission tab. And then under submit action, I'm going to choose AM workflow or invoke an AM workflow. And my form has already been assigned to a particular workflow task. So that's why this is already filled in. Uh, yours is probably going to be empty if this form you're working on has not been through a workflow before. But I'm going to go ahead and choose that workflow model uh, we just uh, worked on. I believe it was called YouTube Video. And Data File Path and Attachment are the two that we're going to link to that workflow step. So back in the workflow, under Form Document, information will be pre-populated. This is if you want uh, data from the submitted form to show up in the workflow. So make sure these two are linked together. Check that, make sure it's synced. And then once this is all filled in, go ahead and save it. So now that's all configured, let's go ahead and test out this workflow. We go to preview. Go ahead and just do some quick tests. And I actually want to separate these two from each other and make sure we can tell them apart. All right, we're going to submit it, and this is going to kick off the workflow. Um, if configured correctly, when we log in as the admin account, we should see a new task. So I'm going to click on my task at the top right, and we can see first step in the application process task has been assigned to us. So I'm going to view all my tasks, and we can see um, that due date we have set up is here as well. I can also change this view to a calendar view. And that will actually show me a visual timeline of when I uh, or when I have to you know complete this task. So I can go ahead and open up this task, and then we can view that form we just submitted with the uh, data intact. So that was the whole purpose of making sure that data.xml is attached to both the workflow and the form itself. And then if I go under skills and interests, I attach the file to this form that we can also open up. Oops. I'm not going to close my server. All right. So some cool things about this uh, workflow screen, um, you're able to attach uh, files uh, that maybe future workflow reviewers can look at. Uh, under workflow details, you can look at who's seen this workflow, um, you know, when the workflow started, overall high level management of the workflow. So, you know, after reviewing it, I can go ahead press submit, which will just continue on the workflow in the uh, next step. But there's no next step, so when I press submit, it's actually going to end the workflow. All right, so that wraps up today's video. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and have a nice day.